Well, we're glad you all are here with us today. And maybe let's start with our youngest today and you guys can introduce yourselves and wish everybody a happy Advent from your house. How about that? Happy Advent from the houses. In our dining room. We're in our dining room. <laughs> Eva, uh, Isabel, and Audrey. I'm not sleeping beauty. Uh, her name's Sleeping Beauty today. <laughs> Lovely, Sleeping Beauty, glad you could join us. <laughs> All right, who would be the next oldest, do we think? Madeline. <laughs> Happy Advent from the Foxes. Yeah, yeah nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Say hi, Rocky. And there's Rocky. Oh, very fun. Oh, no. Hi. <laughs> nice to see you guys. I would probably be the Third, third, third youngest, third oldest. I am Quinn Caldwell um, of the Caldwell household. All right. And I am Vicar Sarah. Happy Advent to all of you. And I am young at heart, Pastor Steve. Happy Advent, everybody. It's great to see you. Looking forward to chapter four of our book today. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll do a prayer if you all are ready for that. So let us pray. God, we thank you for a time of festivity and a time of joy and a time to celebrate and be with you. We thank you for the chance to come together and hear more about this silly story of the Herdmans and how you broke into their lives. Lord, we ask that you help us to have fun with this and enjoy it and that you bless our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 For our opening song today, uh, I thought reflecting on chapter three, where somehow these kids that have never been to church before end up in the middle of a Christmas pageant, what a more fitting Christmas carol than, oh, come all ye faithful. So please feel free to sing along if you would like. And here we go. And today we get to have Quinn read for us, and he is one of my favorite kids. So I'm thrilled that he's here and can do this for us today. Thank you so much, Quinn. Very welcome. Um, so we're starting on page, uh, not page four, uh, chapter four, right? Mm -hmm. Correct? Yes. The first pageant rehearsal was usually about as much fun as a three hour ride on a school bus and as just as noisy and crowded. This rehearsal though was different. Everybody shut up and settled down right away for fear of missing something awful that the Herdmans might do. 
They got there 10 minutes late, sliding into the room like a bunch of outlaws about to shoot up a saloon. When Leroy passed Charlie, he knuckled him behind the ear, and one little primary girl yelled as Gladleys went by. But Mother had said that she, she was going to ignore everything except blood. And since the primary kid wasn't bleeding, and neither was Charlie, nothing happened. Mother said, and here's the Herdman family. We're glad to see you all, which was probably the biggest lie ever said right out aloud in the church. Imogene smiled, the Herdman smiled. We called it sly and sneaky. And there they sat, the closest thing to criminals that we knew about. And they were going to represent the best and most beautiful. No wonder everyone was, was so worked up. Mother started to separate everyone into angels and shepherds and guests at the end. But right away, she ran into trouble. Who were the shepherds? Leroy Herdman wanted to know. Where did they come from? Ollie Herdman didn't even know what a, what a shepherd was, or anyway, that's what he said. What was the inn? Claude asked. What's an inn? It's like a motel, somebody told him, where people go to spend the night. What people? Claude said. Jesus? Oh, honestly, Alice Wendelman grumbled. Jesus wasn't even born yet. Mary and Joseph went there. Why? Ralph asked. What happened first? Imogene hollered at my mother. Beginning at the, begin at the beginning. That really scared me because the beginning would be the book of Genesis, where it says in the beginning, and if we were going to have to start with the book of Genesis, we never get through. The thing was, the Herdmans didn't know anything about the Christmas story. They knew that Christmas was Jesus' birthday, and that, but everything else was news to them. And the shepherds, the wise men, the star, the stable, the crowded inn. It was hard to believe. At least it was hard for me to believe, Alice Wendell Kim said. She didn't have any trouble believing it. How would they find out about the Christmas story, she said. They don't know, even know anything, what the Bible is. Look what Gladsley did to that Bible last week. While Imogene was niching money from the collection plate in my class, Glad Gladys and Ollie drew mustaches and tails on all the disciples in the primary grade illustrated Bible. They were never went to church in their whole life till your, till your little brother told them we got refreshments, Alice said. And all you ever heard, hear about Christmas in school is how to make ornaments out of aluminum foil. So how would they know about a Christmas story? She was right. Of course, they might have read about it, but they never read anything except amazing comics. And they might as well have heard about it on TV, except that Ralph paid 65 cents for their TV at a garage sale. And you couldn't see anything on it unless somebody held, on, held on to the antenna. Even then, you couldn't, still, you couldn't see much. The other way for them to hear about the Christmas story was, in front of, was from their parents. And I guess Mr. Herdman never got around to it before he climbed on the railroad train. And it was pretty clear that Mrs. Herdman had given up ever trying to tell them anything at all. So they just didn't know. And mother said that she had better begin by reading this Christmas story from the Bible. This was a pain in the neck to most of, of us because we knew the whole thing backwards and forwards and never had to be told anything except who were who where were <laughs> who we were supposed to be and where we were supposed to stand. Just Joseph and Mary, his exposed wife, being great with child, Ch child, pregnant, real Ralph Herdman. Well, that stirred things up. All the big kids began to giggle, and all the little kids wanted to know why it was so funny. And mother had a hammer on the floor with a blackboard pointer. That's enough, Ralph, she said, and went on with the story. I don't think that's very nice to say Mary was pregnant, Alice whispered to me. But she was, I pointed out, in a way, though. In a way, though, 
I agreed with her. It sounded too ordinary. Anybody could be pregnant. Great with child sounded better for Mary. And I'm not supposed to talk about people being pregnant. Alice folded her hands in her lap and pinched her lips together. I'd better tell my mother. Tell her what? That your mother is talking about things like that, that in church. My mother might not want me to be here. I was pretty sure she would do it. She wanted to be married and she was mad at mother. I knew too that she would make it sound worse than it was and Mrs. Wendelkin would get madder than she already was. Mrs. Wendelkin didn't even want cats to have kittens or birds to lay eggs. So she wouldn't want, she wouldn't let Alice play anybody who had two rabbits. But there wasn't much I could do about it except pinch Alice, which I did. She yelped and mother separated us and made me sit beside Imogene Herdman and sent Alice to sit in the middle of the baby angels. I wasn't crazy to sit next to Imogene. After all, I'd spent my whole life staying away from her. How do you pronounce that name? Imogene. Imogene. Oh. But she didn't notice me. Not much, anyway. Shut up, was all she said. I want you to hear her. I couldn't believe it. Among the other things, the Herdmans were famous for never sitting still and never paying attention to anyone. Teachers, parents, their own, or anybody else's. The Turant officer, the police, get here they are, were, eyes glued to mom, my mother and taking in every word. What's that? They would yell whenever they didn't understand the language. And when mother read about there being no room at the end, Imogene's jaw dropped and she sat up in her seat. My God, she said, not even for Jesus? I saw Alice pursue her lips, purse her lips together, so I knew that someone else, Mr. Wendelkin, would hear about it. Swearing in the church. Jesus. Wait. No, I don't. I didn't see the page. Well, now, after all, Mother exclaimed, nobody knew the baby was going to turn it out to be Jesus. Did I skip a page? No, I didn't skip a page. I don't think so. You said Mary knew, Ralph said. Why didn't she tell them? I would have told them, Imogene put in. Boy, would, you, would I have told them? What was the matter with Joseph that he didn't tell, didn't tell them? Her pregnant and everything. She grumbled. What was that they laid in the, ba the baby in? Leroy said. That manger. Is that like a bed? Why would they have a bed in a barn? That's just the point, Mother said. They didn't have a bed in the barn, so Mary and Joseph had to use whatever there was. What would you do if you had a new baby and no bed to put the baby in? We book ladies in a burrow drawer Imogene volunteered. Well, there you are, Mother <laughs> said, licking a little. You didn't have a bed for ladies, so you had to use something else. Oh, we had a bed, Ralph said. Only Ollie was still in it, and he wouldn't get out. He didn't like ladies, he elbowed Ollie. Remember how he didn't like ladies? I thought that was pretty smart of Ollie, to not to like ladies right off the bat. Anyway, Mother said, Mary and Joseph used the manger. A manger is a large wooden feeding trough for animals. What were the wild up clothes? Claude wanted to know. The what? She said. He read about it. She wrapped him in waddled up clothes. Swaddling clothes. Mother sighed. Long ago, people used to wrap their babies very tightly in pieces of material that they couldn't move around. It made the babies feel cozy and comfortable. I thought it probably just made the babies mad. Till then, I didn't know anything about what swaddling clothes were either. They sounded terrible. So I wasn't too surprised that when Imogene got all, all, got all excited about it. You mean they tried to feed him, put him in the feed, tied him up and put him in the feed box, she said. Where was the child welfare? The child welfare was always checking up on the hens and herdmans. I'll bet if the child welfare had ever found 
ladies all tied up in a bureau drawer, they would have done, done something about it. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, mother went on, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and shazam, ladies yelled, fingering her arms out and smacking the kid next to her. What? Mother said, mother and Ned never read amazing comics. Out of the black knight with horrible vengeance, the mighty Marvo, I don't know what you're talking about, ladies, mother said. This is the angel of the Lord who comes to the shepherds in the fields and out of nowhere, right? Lady said, in the black night, right? Well, mother looked unhappy, in a way. So Lady sat back down, looking very satisfied, as if the light, least one part of her Christmas story that made sense to her. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, mother went on reading, behold, there came three wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, that's you, Leroy, Ralph said. And Claude and Ollie, so pay attention. What does it mean, wise men, Ollie wanted to know? Were they like school teachers? No, dumbbell, Claude said. It means like the president of the United States. Mother looked surprised and a little pleased, like she did when Charlie finally learned the times table at the five. Well, that's very close, Claude, she said. Actually, they were kings. Well, it's about time, Imogene muttered. Maybe they'll tell the innkeeper where to get off and get the baby out of the barn. They saw the young child up front with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him, and presented him unto gifts, presented unto him gifts, gold, a frankincense, a, fr a frankincense, frankincense? Yes, frankincense. Frankincense. And mirth. What's that stuff? We were wanted to know. Precious oils, mother said. And fragrant, fragrant reasons. Oil, Imogene hollered. What kind of cheap king hands out oils for a present? You better get presents from the firemen. Sometimes the Hermans got Christmas presents at the firemen's party, but Santa Claus had always I always had to feel around the packages to make, be sure they weren't getting bows and arrows or dart guns or anything like that. Imogene usually got sewing cards or jigsaw puzzles, and she never liked them. But I guess she figured out she figured they were better than oil. Then we came to King Harold, and the herdmen's never heard of him either. So Mother had to explain that that it was Herod who sent the wise men to find baby Jesus. Was it him who sent the crummy presents? All he wanted to know. My mother said it was worse than that. He planned to have the baby Jesus put to death. My God, Eugene said. He just got born and they're already out to kill him. The Herman want, the Hermans wanted to know all about Harold, what he looked like and how rich he was and whether he fought wars with people. He must have been, a, he, he must have been the main king, Claude said. If he couldn't make, make the other three do what he wanted to. Wanted them to. If I was king, Leroy said, I wouldn't let some other kings push me around. You couldn't help it if he was the main king. I'd go be king somewhere else. They were really interested in Herod, and they figured, and I figured they liked him. He was so mean he could have been their ancestor, Harold Herdman. But I was wrong. So who's the Harold going to be in this play? Leroy said. We don't show heroin in, the, in our pageant, Mother said. And they got all got mad. They wanted someone to be hero so they could beat him up, beat up on him. I couldn't understand the Herdmans. You would have thought the Christmas story came right out of the FBI files. They got so involved in it. One, they got so, so involved in it, wanted a bloody end to Harold, worried about Mary having her baby born in a barn and called the three the wise men a bunch of dirty spies. And they left the first rehearsal arguing about whether Joseph, Joseph should have set fire to the inn or just chased the innkeeper into the next county. And that concludes chapter four. That's tremendous. That's tremendous. Thank you so much, Quinn. And just imagine what it must be like to hear this fantastic story for the first time. I mean, 
what would you think if you heard that some a, a lady was great with child? You know what? What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what it means. It means she's got a baby in her belly. She's got a what? baby. Who? Mary had a baby. Not quite. Yeah. <laughs> Pregnant in a special way. And the uh, other, one of the other words, a manger. If you hadn't heard this story before and somebody said a manger, would you have any idea what a manger is? It's a manger is like a wooden bed with hay. Yeah, but they didn't know that, right? Actually, a, a wooden trough, a wooden uh, to eat out of, and they used it as a bed instead just amazing and uh, what about wadded up clothes how about that those swaddling clothes would you know what that was if you hadn't heard this story before i think i know what, what that would have been right clothes, since pretend when you tend to watch pieces of like uh fiction you see the mother and her baby all you know huddled up mm -hmm. and huddled up that but, I don't think they, I would have known manger. That's such a, that's such an out there word. It is. I wouldn't have known what that was. Especially to use it as a bed for a baby. Uh, the baby who would be the savior of the world. Well, it's pretty hard for those of us that grow up knowing this story. One of the first stories that we learn. Uh, some people in the world haven't heard it before. And what a wonderful story to be sharing, uh, that God loves us enough to become one of us and to show us God's love in every circumstance of our life together, which is indeed what Jesus is going to do. Would you guys pray with me, please? The Lord be with you. No. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for coming one of us into the world and for the wonderful story around it that we tell so many times to so many people and yet recognize that not everyone has heard it. Please use us to tell others about uh, your willingness to be one of us and to love us forever. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For our closing song today, as we want to make sure everybody hears this story, I couldn't help but think about Go Tell It on the Mountain. Yeah. Yes! Go!
The song had the word manger in it again, too, didn't it? Go. That's right. The closest thing I can think of to major is like a dog food bowl. <laughs> uh, dog food bowl for cows. Well, good. For our uh, dismissal again, I'm going to say, as ones whose voices cry out from the wilderness, you're going to respond, prepare, prepare the way of the Lord. Lord. Here we go. As ones whose voice cry out in the wilderness... Prepare the way of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Bless you this day. I hope your week goes well. Tomorrow, uh, we'll have one more young person. Claire Kramer will be here to share in chapter five. We'd love to have you all join us. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks. Thanks, Quinn. Thanks so much, Quinn. Oh. Really appreciate it, buddy. Well done. Bye-bye.